hey welcome back guys okay so so far we have uh, some uh, content here but we want to be able to validate that content so how exactly do we do that well let's come back to our sign up controller class right here so in order to validate these things we're going to use the uh, request validate function so let me remove that as well even that so we're going to say uh, something like we're going to save the validated data inside validated is equal to request and then here we're going to have validate of course validate like so once we validate we return the sign up page now inside validate here we're going to give it an array of data so when you hear array of course you put two uh, square brackets like that now you don't have to put the array here you can do the array over here like uh, you can say array uh, equal to whatever it is and then finally at the end of the day you put the array here like that okay for as long as it's uh, easier for you to read that's entirely up to you so let's see for example if i want um, if i want it to be required right if i want something to be required so for example here i want email to be required so what i will do is i'll say email here and then set it to required like this mm -hmm. so email is required and i add that there so let's see if uh, we get any errors while trying to do this so first of all let me just refresh the page oh, oh. the page isn't redirecting properly okay so let me um remove those wait a minute wait a minute yeah so let's refresh here okay there we go so if i go to the validation page here on the laravel uh, section here we're going to see that what we're looking for is is this here request validate and then we add our array in there so you tell it what you want and here there's a required there's unique there's post there's required so let's see how these actually work together okay so here what i will do is actually what i want to do here is just so i don't disturb uh the i don't mix these two so what i want to do is let me create a new uh, function here so I'm going to say public uh, function and this one uh, let me just say post that's what I'll call it post like that so that we avoid uh, getting confused and this one will be get like that okay so maybe just to make them unique I'll put an underscore there or maybe that's too much let me leave it like that then i don't need these requests here i just need them in the post because that's what i want to do in the post section so i'm just going to copy that there and then i will copy the return because i want to show the same view either way whatever is happening whether it's the get or it's the post so what i'm trying to do here is that i want to run this function when i just refresh the page and then i want to run this function when i submit some content in both times i just want to view the sign up page anyway okay it's just that what i do here will be different from what i do there so then i have to go back to my web and then update that information so on the get we're going to have the get function on the post we're going to have the post function run so let's see if we get any errors here so refresh no errors post no errors whatsoever okay so that's good it's good to separate the two 
let me try this again now to post and see if I get the pages into redirecting properly and it's not happening now. Okay, so we are good here. So all I've done here is created an array and told it that the email, so where I'm getting this email is on the sign up page here. That's the name I've given to this input. It's email, the other input is password. So email is required. So now once it's validated, if there's an error for some for some reason, let me click here, you see. Uh, refresh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to print readable. Um, request. Oh, I like that. So we can see what we're actually sending. So, all right. Oops, wait a minute. Okay. So now what you will notice here is that no matter what I type, if I type something in password and try to submit, I don't see it echoing here because if you notice, I have print readable here, which should show everything that I have sent. But then the important thing you have to keep in mind is that I'm trying to validate this data up here. So if the validation didn't go well, the code does not move to reach this place here. <clears throat> it doesn't show anything in here. It doesn't put anything inside the request at all. So it means there are some errors somewhere. So how do we see those errors? Uh, we can see them using the error. Let me come here and do this. Using a blade, of course. I'm going to say odd. errors so there is a variable called errors that is created automatically so if I click here now you will see that this error contains an error which says email and then the email field is required hmm very nice so now if I come back to the controller and do the same for password here you will see the same thing occur let me come back here and let me sign up again. So now you see that there are two errors. There's one for email and there's one for password. So it's saying the email is required, the password is required. Mm -hmm. So how do I do it if I want the password to be at least a, um, a certain number? So I'll put the pipe there to say or and then I'm going to say min, like for minimum, you can use min or max, depending on what you want. I'll put a full colon and I'll say minimum should be four, like that. So let's try that again. This time I'm going to type three letters here in the password and hit sign up. And then you see the password must be at least four characters, but then the email is required. Okay, so how exactly did I know how to do this? And like I said, if you come to the documentation on the validation section here, we come down here, validation. So if you scroll down, 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 actually, I don't really need to scroll that far down. There's a word documented right here. If I click, it takes me down. It's on the same page, just down a little bit further. It shows you all available validation rules. They've accepted. Where are the ones we are using? So I'm using min right here, but you can use max, of course. You can use nullable. You see this one, you can use email, for example. So in this case, I can say required, and then also it should be an email like that. Okay, so you can put as many as you want, and then there are descriptions on how to use them. From the beginning which is accepted to the end which is uuid so you can just go through all these and see there are good examples here for example required date 
after tomorrow and so on there's very good documentation on how to use all this and there's one thing you might like is bail here this one tells it to immediately return and not show all errors for as long as it finds one it should stop trying to search for more so let me click here so the email field is required now if i type some kind of email type a full password here send and it will say the email must be a valid email address so you see this is how you can validate your data quite easily so just create an array put the things there and put your rules in the array here and then supply the array there so what if we satisfy everything that we need so let me say here I have a valid email and then I have some valid password and sign up so once I click there now you can see that there's stuff here right it has managed to add some stuff in there which is inside the request form. so let's try and print out the validated here let me do that let's see what we get refresh send so now it shows me what was validated and is correct if i type some gibberish and sign up i get nothing from the validated uh, variable here so just by checking whether there's something in there you know that everything went well and if everything went well, we can go ahead and save this to the database and then we can continue to our view. Okay, so this is how you validate user input. So let's recap a little bit what we did here is that we, we checked to see if there are any errors. We created a form. Don't forget to put this part here. Otherwise you get document expired and then make sure your inputs are named and then you go to your web here make sure that you have a post uh, request accepted for your controller you can put two of them like this the way i did so that you have one when you refresh for the get and another one for the post and then once you're done with this uh, if you go to the controller you have to make sure that request request is there so that you can use it here and then you can go through the validation process like this all right so hopefully you have learned something and i will see you in the next video